Anybody got anything to talk about here that you're in so early? I don't mean to make that sound like so early. Um, I've been hanging around with the computer since 10 to 8. I always feel like, oh, you don't want to make people think that you're here forever. Um, all I want is a photograph. Good morning, Janet. It's Therese. Hey, Therese. Hey, can you hear me well enough? I can hear you great, like you're sitting right next to me. Great. Um, I just wanted to mention last week I had mentioned the green line bugs. Oh, yes. And those little buggers are still past, so I'm so glad we're going to talk about this today. Um, <laughs> I've been squishing them every day, but uh, I did try neem oil on them with not a lot of success. And I just wondered. Um, but they're already, they're already adults, right? They, they are. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Do yeah. they not do damage as adults? Um, they, they can still feed as adults. Um, are you still getting damage on the, on the youngest foliage? Yes. Yeah. Then then you do have one of the bad years. We I remember a year when the whole the tops of so many plants just looked bronze from them, um, and then didn't see them at all after a while. But the the problem with the, the oil is going to smother a soft bodied insect because it it plugs their breathing spiracles. Um, the neem would stop an insect from being able to shed its skin. Well, they're not shedding their skin anymore when they're adults, so the, the neem part doesn't work. And the oil part, because their wing covers are folded over their back when you're standing yeah. at them, that it, it's not getting the oil on all of their spiracles. So you'd have to use something, uh, you'd have to use something deadlier. And squishing, once they're adults, squishing is so hard because they're so fast. And they are fast. I yeah. can't believe it. I mean, they see me coming and they take off. They do. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I, I think we, I think it's when we were talking to, um, uh, Smitty, uh, uh, Dr. Smithley at, at MSU one time, he said, if they look at you, it's a predator. He said, if they <laughs> run like heck, then it's, it's, a, uh, it's, an, in a, it's an insect that's eating the, um, the, the plant. And I said, yep, that's one good way to tell which ones they are. I, yeah. My heart goes out to you because it just looks so awful when they do it. It does. It looks like somebody just took a fire and scorched the yes. top of everything. Yes, it's, yeah. it's a mess. So I was just wondering, is there... Is there something other than the neem oil that like, cause I'm afraid to use seven cause I don't want to um, hurt beneficial insects. Yeah, that's the, that's the problem is that anything else is either going to be a stomach poison now, something that they eat and it kills them. And that would, that would um, taint uh, nectar and, and pollen as well. Yeah. Um, or it's going to be one of those nerve toxin type things. The ones that, that um, I, I would rather people didn't use at all. But um, yeah, there's just not a lot that you can do. I wonder, okay. you, might, you might be able to, um, what's it called? Uh, um, py pyrethrins, because they're very short lived, it, as long as it's the real ones, it, it'd say that on the label that it is pyrethrin in the uh, ingredients, not pyrethroid. Uh, and, will, you, uh, and, will you spell that, Janet? Yeah, P Y R E T H R I N. It's the um, it's the insecticide that's made out of um, some Amazonian. Uh, uh, they use it to stun fish in ponds and whatever. But it's very short lived, so it would be dealing with stuff that's there right now. Um, and that's one of the things that the uh, organic growers are are approved to use or whatever. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Janet. And you know, I learned so much. Thank you for all of this. I'm sure it's not easy to prepare and show up every week, but we appreciate it so much. Thank you, Therese. I, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Nancy, go ahead. Can you un unmute yourself if I don't tell you to unmute yourself? Let's see. Hi, Janet. There you are. Good. It does work. <laughs> yes. Um, I have two questions for you. One is that we are having the house painted and uh, there's lots of scraping going on <coughs> and the painters are doing their best to put drop cloths down when they can. Yeah. But still, we're ending up with a lot of paint chips in the garden bed. So um, aside from aesthetic reasons for the health of the plants and soil, should I be getting out as much of this as I can? Um, it, it doesn't break down re real readily because probably they're, they're using a latex and they've used latex on your house before. Correct. Yeah. Then, then basically what you're doing is you're putting little pieces of plastic in the garden. Mm. And uh, mm. it's not... 
that's not going to hurt anything. That's not going to help anything. And mm -hmm. it, would have to be, it would have to be a lot to seriously change the, uh, the way the soil is holding water or whatever. So I think aesthetics is your main thing. It is really hard to protect plants. We try, yeah. to hit that, we try to hit that narrow window working around the house that, okay, we're gonna work in November. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Except, it, it, was, it would be ideal to find a painter who's also a gardener. <laughs> yeah, would well, that be something? Okay, there it is. There's the, there is the- uh, Well, the, uh, Chris Good at least is a painter who knows a gardener. <laughs> here's the, uh, right. here, here's the um, what do you call that? The opportunity of a lifetime for somebody. The sign yeah. that says the gardening painters, the painting <laughs> gardeners. And then my other question <laughs> about uh, you want a scale, which oh. uh, has suddenly appeared on our uh, variegated euonymus. And as I recall, it's a little late to do anything now for this batch. Um, is my understanding there's another batch coming in July, possibly? Um, usually with the euonymus <laughs> scale, they, they uh, recommend that you uh, apply an oil or an insecticide when the crawlers first emerge sometime in May and mm -hmm. then follow up with another um, to, to catch what you missed sometime in late June or July. So it mm -hmm. might the numbers down a little bit. Um, but yeah, you are you are stuck with unless you use a systemic, you can't really do anything about them this time of year. Yeah. Except prune off the worst pieces there. Usually on on you on the scale, uh, on Yuan, the scale gets bad where the air doesn't flow very well. So when they're yeah. up against the house or whatever, they'll be bad on the inside. But you can let more air in there, um, e even if it means temporarily putting some stuff out, you can get ahead of it. Um, yeah, that's, a, that's exactly it. It's growing right up against the brick. And it's that part against the brick that all of a sudden lost its leaves. And you can see all the stuff on the stems. Saw that a lot at uh, Cranbrook one year where they had this beautiful Yuan on on. Uh, a pedestal and it just it got covered totally yeah. it was almost white <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. I, remember, I remember we took some iguanas out for a client because she said it was just too icky and she couldn't stand to have it around and i said well what are, what are we going to put back there she said iguanas so we put iguanas back there and they got to the scale but then eventually it, it worked its, itself out i don't i just don't grow them against the house anymore because i can't stand i can't i can't stand yeah. with that Ugh. um uh, do look uh, I I looked at scale on um, whatever it was on a lilac at a at a house in Ohio a couple of years ago, and I said, "Oh, you want the scale?" I didn't know it got on a lilac, and it turned out it was Japanese maple scale, which is tinier than the Yuanma scale. Um, but they still are kind yeah, of oblong. Yeah, they, yeah. You might want to if you want to send us a picture, we'll just make sure we don't we're not seeing Japanese maple scale, which is badly named because it's like Japanese beetle. It gets on a lot of different, different things. things. Uh, Okay, when when I do prune that out, um, do I just trash it rather than compost it? If you hot if you hot compost it, it's not a problem. So you could put it in the your yard waste and let sakura or um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, but um, I can follow up with another oil just mm -hmm. in case. It's okay. Oil, yeah. <laughs> to get any the of neem, late bloomers. The neem oil. Neem oil or any horticultural oil, like we said, even vegetable oil, if you put a little soap into it to keep it emulsified, to keep it mixed up in the water, it can work. Yeah, maybe okay. make sure it's not hot and sunny. The oil, oh, right, right. The oils are not good in the hot and <coughs> sun. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much. And thank you again for uh, being here for all of us and for spending your Saturday morning with us. <laughs> Thanks, Nancy. Well, thank, thank you here. for spending years with us. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Sonia, um, you are co-host or you're supposed good to. Good morning. So you're okay, good yes. morning. And, uh, yep. and, we're, and asking, I... we're asking our other Sonia um, if she will unmute. It occurs to me, I asked her to send me a picture and then I forgot to look for it. She might have. Okay. okay, I'm now unmuted. Now now we're now we're set, Sonia. I, you know, I asked you to send me a picture and I forgot to go looking we, for it. We've so been I a have... little hectic this week <laughs> that that that's okay i was just wondering if you did get it because we had an awful time sending it, it they were taken with the smartphone and then having to get it to the email i mean it's not <laughs> used to doing this so. oh yeah you know we sit there forever i got my gloves off and i'm poking around at the phone going there's gotta be a way to do this we were trying to find a my uh, my granddaughter and i were trying to um 
uh, research an insect that we found yeah. outside. And, and of course she uses computers a lot. So I said, okay, let's, <clears throat> let's, let's put the image into Google and scan the image, um, have it search for the image. And we could not figure, even with, even with an 11 year old, I could not figure how to get that picture over from the phone to, to, to scan it into Google. And, and yet you've got a, a, an iPhone and iPads and Mac computers, and you still can't we yeah. still, it's still hard because they're different but, systems. But Steve just told me that he said, he's, yeah, I did see that there's a picture and you were, I was going to tell you. That was an there. email. That's all I noticed. Yeah. I didn't open. So I'll, uh, I'll take a look at that right after and, and ship you an email back, Sonia. Oh, well, that's okay. Now, if I do cut it down, do I cut this flush to the ground? Well, you can. Um, and, and that was one of the reasons that I was having you send an email was so that I could just look to see sometimes Sometimes if it's just one thick trunk, I guess we, I, I guess I can't talk about that right now. I'll have to put it in the email back to you. Okay, that, that's fine. I'm glad that you got it. And thank you for doing this. <laughs> You're welcome. So, okay, thank you. For those of you who've joined us and uh, came in early for the warm up period here, we're working our way into our weekend, our, new, our usual weekend walkabout, which, come on now, which this week is about, uh, Pest patrol, uh, particularly on the vegetable gardening. We'll start that at, at 8.30. Um, but right now we're making sure that people do know how to turn their microphones off and on if they'd like to talk a question rather than chat a question because you should find your chat button and the raise your hand control to be able to do that. Um, and it does, you don't have to keep your chat window open. It can uh, cover part of the screen and some people don't like to see things keep popping up. And the the chat on. tends to scroll. Yeah. And and sometimes it's distracting. I know it catches my eye. Yeah, it does for me. The motion catches my eye. So if you're, um, if you're uh, new to our webinars here, make sure the bottom of your screen looks like the bottom row, here, bottom row here. You should have a slash through your microphone and a slash through your video so that you're not sending us a sound that you don't mean to be sending. Or images. Or images. Um, and if you open your, your participants window, that's where you can find your raise your hand control. It's either there in the participants window or you actually have it down in, uh, in reactions or on the bottom of your screen. But raise your hand would let you say, I'd like to ask a question and then, then you can voice your question rather than poke around typing. Mary Ellen, raise your hand. Good, Mary Ellen, what can we, uh, now, now you'll have to uh, uh, click your microphone so that you can, there you go. What's up? I did, I'm, Sorry, I saw the hand and I just clicked it because I just got on and I thought. <laughs> that's great. Well, that's, that's how great. it works. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you can click your microphone back off then. Yeah, I've got to, okay, take my microphone off and put my picture on. Okay. Take your picture off too. There we go. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, and then there's also a chat uh, menu that's either, it either says chat or it's in dot, 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 more. And uh, if you go there, you'll find that you can type in, if you type to everyone, which is what you should send questions to, to everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't send pri <coughs> private to us because we don't answer it. Well, <laughs> we can, can't see it. You can, you can toggle this can everyone it. and pick another participant's name and you could send to a friend privately or to us privately, but we won't see the private message because we're um, busy looking at the other part of the screen. So send to everyone that that's the part that we look at during the question and answer sessions. But when you type in down there, when you hit return, it's that question will pop to the top where we can see it during a question and answer session or where Sonia Nicola, our daughter, who moderates all of this stuff for us and keeps it under control, can see it and line the questions up for a question and answer session. Um, there is an outline. It's, uh, it's a bare bones outline this time, a place for you to keep notes. And, uh, and there is a link, two links um, in the, uh, oh, so there it is again. Um, so there's a link in the chat box. If you open it up, you can click on it and get that uh, downloaded if you haven't done that already. So we have a, a few minutes here. We have six minutes before we officially start uh, talking about vegetable pests. So if there is anything that anybody has any questions about, now is the time to do that. Um, yeah, I've got uh, RK is saying, I've noticed curled leaves on my dogwoods and burning bushes. When I open them up, I find black ants inside. What do you think is going on? I think that's a great lead in. I think that you have an aphid uh, infestation. The ants are there um, milking the aphids. I would go to that picture, but we'll, we'll see it later. Um, 
ants are tending the aphids. They're, they're tending them as if they are a herd of cows. They drink the honeydew that the um, aphids excrete and they'll even move aphids around to better places. Um, so when you see ants, quite often you're, you're also seeing aphids. So probably the underside of leaf or, or sometimes curled up inside the leaf. And let's see, dogwoods, um, burning bushes. Well, if the dogwoods, almost certainly it's gonna be a gray aphid. I'm not sure if the burning bush is going to be a gray aphid or a green aphid, but mm. um, you can you can blast those off with a, with a, a spray of water. The ants will try to protect them. They'll they, they will literally try to protect yes, their they aphids. Yes, they do. Um, they they do move them around, so you might see that they they'll bring them back again. But you can spray them off with hard with a hard spray of water, or you can use an insecticide on them, or you can look the other way. Although in dry periods, aphids are sucking moisture, and your leaves are going to be quite it, they, they'll get quite distorted and scorchy looking too, if yeah. they're dry. They scorch easy, especially the dogwoods tend to. Yeah, I thought I would ask people if they knew what this was, Steve. This is a uh, this is a native tree bloom that you're looking at. Does anyone know what it is? Um, Karen's wondering about butterfly bush that has curled leaves, but no sign of pests. Um, did you cut the butterfly bush all the way back or did you let it come from where it was coming, um, like you might do with some hybrid roses, it might be, it might have, okay, then it's not a problem of, of a bad wood, almost certainly. It might be just drought. Um, let's see, might what be else dry. could be? Yeah. It's, it's hard for butterfly bushes to get too dry because they're, they're drought yeah, loving, seen they're drought loving characters. Yes, yeah, yeah they, they grow on, uh, on uh, slag sand for crying out loud. Let's see, what else could curl the leaves? No sign of women's pests. Yeah, I and I have to think about that one. Um, Karen, I will, let's see, I'm sure we have everybody's email, right? I mean, yeah, we, well, we have email, to right? if they so, get the yeah, invitations. Yeah. If, if I don't, if something doesn't occur to me as we go along here, um, I can uh, look that one up because I haven't seen that one before. I, um, I noticed uh, Bill and Roy, you have your uh, mic on. Did you guys have a question? Is this a catalpa tree? All right, yes, yes very Sonia. good. Good job, Sonia. <laughs> very good. Yeah. Isn't it gorgeous? Like an orchid, it's just a beautiful thing to look at. I like it catalpas. Takes. Some people call them the uh, bean tree plants because they get uh, a, a long seed pot on it. it it's cigar. amazing that they have this orchid-like flower and then they get bean, they get their bean, bean pods yeah. and their leaves are massive. Yeah. yeah, they're beautiful trees. We like catalpas. Um, let's see, I think it was Gretchen. I'm not sure if Gretchen, if I've seen if Gretchen is here today. Um, Gretchen was asking about her rhubarb and the, the veins turning yellow. And I'm wondering if, if it looks like this here where the, the veins get lighter because this is pretty normal um, abscission of old leaves on, on rhubarb. And uh, what they're doing is withdrawing the nutrients from the leaf and just letting them die back uh, in preference for newer leaves, if that's what your rhubarb is doing. And somebody, I think that's here in this household, did not cut back that foliage. Is that in the back garden, Stephen? That's That's in a bluebell foliage, yep. I didn't cut back the foliage back there. It really can distract me looking at bulb foliage this time of year. That's part of the reason why photographers clip those leaves out, but might leave the green ones in because even though the bulb foliage doesn't belong, it makes an interesting look. In fact, I have it. I took the second picture. I clipped it out. Stephen's been out uh, doing photography with other professional gardeners, and it is amazing the kinds of tricks that they use. Yes, they'll clip things out of the way. They'll ask someone to remove the bad leaves from the lawn. Uh, they'll take a flower and clip it out here and move it over and set it in. And pin it in place. <laughs> to someplace else. It's, I have. They'll spray things down with a fine mist of water to, to make them shine. And, and speaking, of, speaking of water, Karen says her water bill tells her that everything is being well watered. Yeah. And make sure that it's not a, a soaker hose that's got a hole in it. Yeah. Or and it, and it drip is, irrigation too. And it is true that even with an irrigation system, you can have dry spots that um, that get missed. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. shall we move on then? Let's I don't see. know. But, uh, Looks like oh, you only had, yeah, say twenty nine. Yeah, so we shall uh, move on here. 
Oh, if we do have one minute, we just got uh, Karen asking, can a tree peony be planted in full sun? Yes, they can. Uh, uh, I would not, as I did just recently, I would not move it right now into full sun <laughs> because it will make you feel bad, very bad <laughs> for a year. <laughs> Hang its leaves and make you feel it, it, it'll be grouchy. But yes, it can grow in the full sun. <laughs> All right, and that takes us to 8.30. Okay. All right.